opportunity to really engage differently with others? I think, to be honest, it's slightly changing. I wouldn't say like it's all changed or the way you find enough people that say, where's the business case, how does that work, and so on. But you can see that actually some of the initiatives that started this year, last year, uh, with a lot of CEO support are, sla are starting to change the game. So I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that, uh, that this is just superficial. I think in the top management this has been understood. But we cannot underestimate the way it takes a big table to change the mindset from cost saving, total focus. I always, I always ask when, 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 when we uh, talk about uh, customer engagement and we all know if we, the tables are in the subscription business, so would you really advise the customer to downgrade something which is not useful for him? Would you do that as a good customer service? I think that there, there you come to some very crucial questions when in the short term it might even hit you financially, maybe in the long term you have a better customer relationship. Are you really prepared to make those steps? And Sri, what about, what about for you? Because also you're going to the engineer. Is it more than just you know, cost savings or are you focusing more about you know, stickiness, you know, reducing churn when you're thinking about your digitization strategy? So I think there's more done beyond this just cost saving because uh, we've seen that in the uh, help of the B benchmark, that by doing a good customer experience in the long term, they also get another business out there, including like increased share price, including um, increased revenue if we do it well. So uh, that's how our focus is not just in Indonesia when, it, when we implement customer experience transformation, our focus is not just mainly about uh, about reducing cost, but also creating an image that we are serving the customer better to increase loyalty and uh, satisfaction. But also at the end, in the long term, we have a KPI that uh, that will also have another business outcome beyond the uh, reducing cost. And what was your, 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 uh, you know your view with um, you know? If we're looking at this, the impact of AI now, you know, having some experience, and this is going to start to, you know, really have, have, a, have an impact. How, how, what, where do you think AI can be applied, you know, early on to enhance the customer experience? Can it be applied? Yes, it can be, and I think it's a journey. And uh, I think, again, you asked a very valid question to, I think it was to Sandra or someone. The humanization of anything that you do in a customer experience context, when you're trying to do digital transformation, uh, it, you can definitely leverage it. But the question is, I think uh, it's a long way to go before we can really reap the benefits of AI uh, in enriching the customer experience. Yes, you will always face various uh, philosophical debate about whether you are really enriching it or not. Uh, I personally belong. Uh, I personally believe uh, it's a journey, uh, but you need to look at it. You need to keep an eye on it. Uh, it's not going to happen so fast. I mean, as Dirk's point, uh, there's so much of legacy out there. You're laying it, layering it another few things. Uh, it's not going to help. I, I, get, I get this. The topic is strategies for improving customer experience in a digital age. AI is there. It's for the future. Let's address the problems for today and tomorrow. That's what I would say. And Francis, how about you, Small Enterprise? Is, is, is that AI strategy that you're looking at uh, going forward with? Yeah, we are. But mainly, I'm, I'm seeing two things, uh, two domains where AI should be able to help us. Uh, in the enterprise space, the, the portfolio of products is, is, is 10 times, or maybe 100 times more complex than the consumer space. So if you imagine the self-care portal, you know, the stuff that you can do in the self-care portal, you know, it's complex as well. So I see AI there um, as a way to guide the user, the customer, Towards the right uh, form or application, or whatever he needs to uh, he needs to do. Um, also, and it's linking back to our, to our discussion on cost reduction. I see AI and robotic process automation as a, as a key uh, tool to create some headroom in operations because the the people in operations are really they are facing a, a increasing complexity and they're uh, suffering. So by Robotizing, um, automating some of the, the, the stupid work, uh, so to say, uh, we can create some headroom to free up uh, time and, and space to do the real digital transformation. So these are the two uh, applications of AI that I see. No, is it the 
same view you're seeing as a way, you know, for kind of speeding up some digitization, giving some people in the operations, you know, a bit more space to, to get on with some of the other more challenging parts? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, to replace boxes uh, is a bit of a useless activity, particularly when you come to the conclusion that the box was not full. So, yes, yes, uh, let's do that by the robots. And so, what, what, how, how do you think AI is going to revolutionize this as a strategy to as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't believe it's, it's suddenly taking on big time and influencing everything. I think it will be more evolutionary, is my, my prediction, because it's to, for AI to be really useful is much more difficult, it's always underestimated, although now a lot of progress is made. But I think uh, what, what take was even with, to, to, for AI to function, what Sri said is, is uh, how do I leverage the data assets? Uh, because also very often AI machine learning is building on data assets. And, and, and to get those rights, uh, I think, is one of, one of the core things uh, for takers to think about and make that useful. And then you can put uh, some AI technologies and so on on top of it once you master and manage and, and manage that. And that, for me, is, remains a big challenge, especially uh, if we now look under the whole legislation, GDPR, uh, where we're saying, OK, we have a lot of rights of the data subjects. You cannot just use all the data you wish you want to use. So you really need to also convince um, the, um, the, the user to give you the data to get something in return. And I think that's the strategic thinking uh, that takers need to think. They have all this data, but they need to get permission to do it. And they need to create something useful for the end customer, not primarily for themselves. Because once they've done it, then I think some of the benefits will come afterward, but it's not the direct thing. So, so I think that is a little bit of what rethinking that needs to happen. And AI as a technology can help with that, but I don't think like betting now everything on an eye and ignoring all the rest of these things is going to be very helpful, then it's just a bad And Sri, how about for you? Are you, are you implementing any parts of uh, AI now into, into your strategy? Yeah, I think uh, first of all, AI as just one of many technologies will help us in the how to drive uh, customer experience transformation. But most importantly is the why, which is the customer insights. So I think uh, that is one of the utmost important tool for us. So what we do is we started to use AI, of course, uh, with our uh, call center. But we started with the billing. So we support the customer who contact us to uh, uh, chat uh, for the billing. So, but then this is just an initial phase because we believe that these technologies is important, but then the why this customer insight is much, much more important to uh, the customer experience and communication. Good, do we have any questions from, from the audience?